If your parts need to be, you know, off the side or something, you can move this little guy around, do whatever you need to, up and down. We're gonna set lots of inserts. So let's take a look at some of the parts that you're gonna need for this build. All right, so here we have three of the feet of an Ender 3. Uh, these are the 40 by 40 extrusion. This is the top crossbar. This is the build uh, plate gantry, sled, whatever you want to call it. The build plate itself, wheels. Uh, you can also have the springs if you want. Uh, we have one motor. We have the X axis uh, tensioning wheel. Uh, we have five of the M5 bolts that hold the uh, legs together. I forget how long that is. Looks like 30 millimeter or so, something like that. And one shorter one. We have one belt. Uh, these wheels and such are for here. So these are the Z axis gantry parts. Um, on the one on this side that has the motor, we only need that side. These are the printed parts that the uh, um, will be in the description, a link to them. And we have here soldering iron. Okay, like I said, these are three of the feet. On an Ender 3, there's only two of these. Um, and there's this middle piece of 4040 that goes across the center. Um, so if you don't happen to have three of these, you only have two, and you do have one of these, use this as the foot. And these are two different sleds off of an Ender 3. This is from an Ender 3 Pro, and this is from a regular Ender 3. Um, what, when you're looking at this, this is upside down, obviously. Uh, the 2040 extrusion rides through here, and on the Ender 3 Pro, it's a 4040 extrusion rides through here. However, it doesn't matter. They all have the same holes in it. So if you only have this one available, you can just move it so that it matches up the wheel, the holes here, because this is what it, you want it to look like. But if you only have that, like I said, move it out to the here and here, and then there's two holes back there. It works fine. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, one of the feet here, doesn't really matter which one, and we're gonna slip it into the uh, base. Just make sure that you have the posts on one side and the eccentric nuts on the other. And it should just feed right on in through there, just like that. It's just hard to do with one hand. Next, we're gonna add the bottom crossbar. So I have two different examples here for you. This is off of the Ender um, 3 Pro, and this is off of the standard Ender. You can see, you know, four holes here, two here. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, I'm gonna use the Ender 3 Pro one, just because. We're gonna attach it to the other rail here. Um, I'm just gonna use two of the M5 bolts. That's all it needs. It doesn't need all four of them. And, and now we're gonna attach the third leg. I guess technically it's gonna be a Z gantry now, but that's all right. Um, now we're gonna attach it here onto the base. Now you see here, we have two holes coming here. Um, we have four holes here at the bottom. So facing this direction, we're gonna offset it to the back ones. Um, so it's not gonna be 100% straight on. It's gonna be offset a little bit and that's fine. Um, now the things to consider when you're doing this uh, is the holes that are drilled into these uh, extrusions. Um, you can see there's a good shot of it right there. You do have a little bit of a cutout on the uh, extrusion there and you're gonna have V wheels going up through here. So you will bump that in in just using it. Um, I'm going to have it so it would only be on one side of the extrusion, like this side here, you know, there's the hole through it, but they don't do any kind of clearancing for the head of the bolt. Um, so uh, you're gonna hit this at some point or another. It's just if you wanna hit one side at the, you know, I, I wanna do it so that they're both at the same level. So uh, we're gonna tilt this guy this way and we're gonna mount it on here with two more of those M5 screws. Now you should have this as your current state of 
disarray. <laughs> um, you can either take these little sticker pads off of that, or you can just face them towards the inside. And I'll show you why here in a second. Next thing we're gonna deal with is this Z carriage. So um, you, what you wanna do is get rid of that side. Um, go ahead and put these two wheels back in. Um, so if we sp spin it around here, this one by itself is gonna have the eccentric nut in it. And these two are just gonna have the spacers. Um, but this one we have to take off uh, momentarily here because I've got to put a part in it. That part is this piece of the 3D printed parts. There we go. So now we have that little part put onto the um, spacer. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our motor. Um, if you have a bad motor, even better. Um, don't use one off of a machine that you're actually using because it's just a weight. That's all this is going to be. So we're going to, with the way that this is oriented now, we're going to put the motor face down and we're going to just attach it with two screws. You don't need any more than that. It's just to hold it in place. It's not going to do anything other than be weight. And there we go. We have one completed carriage. And now with the other uh, X piece, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, for the time being, we're not going to put a wheel in here, but we are going to put that spacer or the little uh, grom print 3D printed grommet onto the upper wheel here. To finish up this other side of the carriage, um, so just to give you an idea of how it's gonna be placed, this one's gonna be on the front of the machine, and this one is gonna come in from the back side of the machine here like this. So um, we need the additional wheel parts, so the eccentric uh, nut here, a nut, um, you know, the threaded lock nut, uh, V wheel, and then we need these two M5s. So this is the same size that's been throughout the rest of the bottom, and this is one of the short ones that used to be in the top rail. Uh, of course, we need a top rail. So we're gonna assemble this. We're gonna flip that over. This is gonna sit essentially here. The holes here match the ones that are in the top of the uh, um, top brace here. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the short screw into this back hole or this furthest hole in. Uh, and then we're going to use the longer one on this uh, center one here. We're going through the eccentric nut. Now look, uh, I've put two extra or no, I'm sorry, one extra washer on here. It already had one there, so it has a second one there. And you need to do that uh, if you're gonna use this particular uh, screw, uh, because if you don't, it'll interfere with the, the center wheel here. It'll knock into it. So um, we'll get this assembled and I'll show you what that looks there like. There we go. So we're all assembled here except for the V wheel itself and the nut. Uh, this one is a little loose and that is just so we can get a little bit of movement out of the carriage. We're now going to take the carriage and mount it. It's going to go on the back side here like this. Uh, and this, at this point, you need to have that room to be able to get the V wheel on there and the nut. So let's get that installed. Now that's installed, uh, you can see here that the screw is just flush with that nut. Uh, if you can really see that. You can't have it sticking out any further than that or else it will hit the screws on the other side of the other of this carriage. So you don't want that happening. Um, after you get this one situated, go ahead and tighten up this little guy and it should move pretty freely. Uh, now remember, I told you earlier about this little divot here, that's that click that you're hearing. It's not a big deal. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one on. So remember we left this wheel loose and that will help us get it onto this one and it will leave us just enough room. Um, well, you can hold it up here when you're tightening it up so that you have access to this, uh, the screw. There we go. 
and again, you want it pretty loose on here. Um, not enough that it's going to fall off or anything, but you want it to move pretty freely. And as you can see here, remember, these two guys are lined up at the top. All right, and the next part that we're going to put on is the uh, end of the X-axis uh, tensioner. And so it only has one screw in there, and that's perfect for what we're going to do. We're actually going to put it here into the one slot, and if you look here, you can see this big fat head screw on the end of it. We're just going to let that rest on the top of the uh, our our what Z-axis gantry, I guess is what we're calling it, and we're going to tighten it up so that it'll fit right there and be relatively centered. Look how pretty that looks. This thing is so dirty still. I mean, this I think this is the piece off of the one that came out of the smoky house because it is just so grungy and nasty. Ugh, it's gross. Anyway, time to do the belt. Um, so the belt has these little crimps on the end. And that's not going to work for these 3D printed pieces here. So you need to use your side cutters like that and cut the end off of one side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to feed it through the uh, 3D printed part and feed it through like an inch or so. And then we're going to zip tie it with some small zip ties up uh, over and together so that the teeth will lock together. And we have a few little zip ties on there and we'll cut the ends off here in a second. Uh, but the next thing we need to do is to do this side. Now, of course, Having it down here isn't going to help us out. Uh, so we're going to lift this all the way up to the top. We'll kind of pull it tight. We'll say, okay, there, plus another inch or so. We're going to cut the, we're going to cut the belt about here. With it fed through up here and it's got its own little tail, now we can kind of just verify that it's going to move okay. Remember, we're hitting that little divot there in the middle and that will come all the way down. So that'll be just fine. We're going to zip tie this little guy closed and then we're almost done. There we go. All of them uh, on and trimmed off. A little tip is actually when you're putting these on is to unhook it from here. So it just makes it a little bit easier to deal with. And you're just going to reach up, slip it back on there and now it'll move up and down. Sweet. We're almost there. The next thing we're going to do is put the bed on. Uh, so uh, we do have to do some disassembly here. Uh, so we do have the thermistor sitting in the middle. We're going to get that off of there and uh, we're going to remove these wires here. Um, you could use a soldering iron and unsolder them or you could just cut them. And if you need to later, you could just resolder them on, whatever. Um, so I'm probably just going to cut them because I have like three beds. And I only need one that I'm actually using. So uh, the other thing to keep in mind too is that we do have the screws and stuff here holding the V wheels on. So you can't mount this directly to here. Um, so you're gonna either need to use the spacers or springs, whatever your little heart desires. I'm gonna be using the uh, spacers for now um, just so that it's a solid connection. And then to connect it all we're just going to use the stock wheels on the uh, screws so we'll get that done and then there's only one thing left to do now you can see the bed is secured onto there and see this is kind of a cool thing about this design um, with having the wheels and such is that you can move it uh, depending on where you need it to be um, I'm going to set up the uh, soldering iron here so that it's in the center of the build plate uh, when it gets to there, that little divot. So it remember we have the, uh, the little threaded holes there. Um, so it, boom, that's gonna be my normal position for using it, I think. Um, so we're gonna attach the soldering iron so that it gets right to the middle. So to do that, we have the other 3D printed piece. And I just attached a couple of screws that I had uh, roaming around. So, you know, they're not the right length, but 
that's okay. So we're gonna set that guy. Uh, actually, we can't put it on there yet. We have to put the soldering iron through here first. So let me show so you. So like that. I said at the very beginning, this is the same 60 watt soldering iron that the pre-made kit comes with. So um, it's gonna work great. And uh, it's kind of nice. They give you a bunch of uh, little threaded inserts. Uh, looks like those are probably M2s, I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, they didn't give you any a bunch of sizes. But they just gave you the one, but that's okay. Uh, and this one here, this is the one that you're mainly going to be concerned with. This has the uh, tips and stuff like that in there. I can't get it open one-handed, um, but I'll show you that here in a second. So uh, in the meantime... You know, with this 3D printed part, you can see it's split down the middle. That is so that you can get it over the cord. And then it's a press fit to get it down here to the collar. Fits nicely right on there. And now it's just going to get mounted right up here on the uh, gantry. And you can kind of see now why we mounted things the way that we did. Why this is mounted forward here. Uh, and, and such in the uh, hand, what I'm going to call the handle, because you're going to actually just use this to move up and down, um, is mounted on the back side. And right where it's located here is about dead center of the build plate. So you can't get any better than that. Uh, so now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it down and about call it a day. And to finish everything off, we're just going to go ahead and put the tip of the uh, um, threaded insert boss, whatever you want to call it, uh, into the soldering iron. So this one's pretty nice. It, it, it's got like a little silicone sock in there so you don't smash it uh, when you're not using it. Uh, it. It's real simple to do. All you got to do is just unscrew this little guy here. that that will fall out and then you just take this guy here and that's going to fit in its place of this thing so we'll drop it we'll drop hold on hold on one-handed filming there we go all right so the threaded end will show up through there we'll fish it back on there and re tighten it back up. Ta-da! And that's it. Plug it in, set the temperature to whatever you need it to, and go ham. Uh, so, you know, you use this to go up and down with it to get to your parts. If your parts need to be, you know, off the side or something, you can move this little guy around, do whatever you need to, up and down. We're going to set lots of inserts and it'll be happy as a lark. Let's show you it in action. So we have this little guy here. This is the threaded insert itself, and it's kind of hard to see, but uh, on the bottom side, it is a little bit thinner than the top. It also doesn't have like a knurling up the top, so we're at the bottom. So we're just gonna put that in our hole, and we're gonna move this over here, right underneath of it. See, and this is why this is why the movable bed comes in handy. And we're just gonna line it up here. We're gonna kind of hard to do one-handed. Get it in there. Slowly push it down. Just get it right under the surface. Perfect. Focus. There you go. And that is as fast as it goes in. Nice and straight. So, that's it. It operates. Yay. Hopefully, I will be putting it to a lot of use. A lot of use means that I'm selling a lot of product and putting this thing through its paces. If I don't ever happen to use it again, I can always take it apart and use the parts for something else. Um, maybe we'll make a ice machine or something. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've made it this far, I appreciate you and we will see you next time. Peace out, sauerkraut.